spigot servers. They've grown kind of infamous in the survival Minecraft community, particularly with farm builders and technical players. This is because Spigot and its clones such as Paper, Pufferfish, Airplane, and Purpur change a lot of fundamental game mechanics that vanilla players are familiar with. However, not all hope is lost. If you would like to set up a Spigot server, there are some configuration steps you can take to restore most of the vanilla behavior. Here I have the Purpur server jar, which is a fork of Spigot, and the Minecraft Eula, which I have already agreed to. If we run this command, it will launch the server. After running the server, it will generate these configuration files, which we will need to look into individually. Depending on what version of Spigot you choose, you may not have all of these config files, so feel free to skip those sections of the video as marked down below. Let's start with the vanilla default server config file. Now, you might think it's the vanilla config file, so there's nothing we would need to change. However, uh, you'll notice there are a few things. Uh, firstly, the difficulty by default is set to easy, but most people who play Minecraft these days prefer the difficulty on hard, mainly because it allows for things like zombie village recurring, um, door breaking, and some other mechanics that aren't unlocked on the easier difficulties. The one other thing that you might want to change is the spawn protection. Often people just want to be able to edit blocks no matter how close to spawn they are, so if you're going for a pure vanilla experience you might also want to change this to zero. Next we have the bucket configuration file. Bucket is the server software that Spigot was originally based off of to allow for plugins and server mods. However, I believe everything in this file is already at a good vanilla default, so there's nothing we need to change. Moving on, we have the spigot configuration file. All spigot servers will come with one of these. Uh, there are a few things we do need to change to make this behave similar to vanilla. Uh, for example, we have the item merge radius. On spigot, this is quite large, but in vanilla, items can only merge from half a block away. Uh, and for experience orbs, in vanilla they cannot merge at all, meaning that there's actually a limit to how quickly you can pick up experience. Uh, and on a lot of spigot servers, you can make a very powerful experience farm without actually worrying about the size because the orbs will just merge. Um, so setting that to zero will restore the vanilla behavior. Next up in my config, we have entity activation range. This is a spigot setting that freezes the entity AI when they are this distance away from a player or more. Um, effectively making them not process, not get ticked. This can heavily impact a lot of different farms, particularly with iron farms. Uh, generally, you want to set this to be a value equal to 16 times your render distance. Since the vanilla render distance is 10 chunks, I will be setting all of these to 160 blocks. And then similarly, we have entity tracking range uh, this is how far away a player can see entities on a spigot server. So, for example, if you have a render distance of 10 chunks on spigot, by default you won't be able to see other players until they come within 48 blocks of you. Uh, once again, we probably want to change all of these to be 10 times your render distance, so with a vanilla value it would be 160. Um, moving on, we have the hopper can load chunks. This should be true to restore vanilla behavior. And lastly, we have max TNT per tick. On Spigot, they limit this to 100 to prevent server lag, but you might want to disable this limit entirely, and to do that, you set it to zero. Next up, we have the paper configuration file. In 1.19, they split this into two separate configuration files in the config folder at your server. In this file, there are three settings we need to change. We need to enable headless pistons. We need to allow permanent block break exploits. We need to allow piston duplication. This is for carpets and rails. And with these three settings changed, then the vanilla mechanics are restored. For the other paper configuration file, there's a little bit more we need to do. We need to allow player cramming, so cramming damage from entities. We need to increase the max entity collisions from 8 to 24. 
we need to do a phantom setting where phantoms will attack any player, not just the player that summons them. Uh, we need to fix a setting with iron golems. So this is actually a bug, but Mojang says this is working as intended, where iron golems can spawn floating in air, and a lot of iron farms do rely on this feature. And then there is the ender pearl in unloaded chunks. This uh, is a setting that allows people to throw an ender pearl into unloaded chunks and then leave it there and reload it to teleport. Uh, Paper considers this to be a bug, but Mojang considers this to be intended behavior, so I believe we should allow it. Um, there is a setting called split oversized stacks. Uh, we want to allow oversized stacks. There are a few bugs to enable this, and I think if anyone is going to patch them, we should leave it to Mojang. And then this one probably won't affect most vanilla players, but uh, if you use scoreboards on your server to track statistics for items or entities or anything that isn't a player, you will need to enable these two as well. And lastly, we have fixing invulnerable end crystals, so getting an end crystal from the end, and curing zombie villagers. So paper by default disables zombie villager curing. We would want to re-enable that for our players. And with that, we are done with the paper configuration files. Editing Ev here, there are a few important updates for 1.20 in the paper config files. For the global file, there is a fix entity position desync. We want to set this to false so that we can build entity unstackers, uh, separators. And for the world defaults file, there are three things. There is a filter uh, bad tile entity NBT. We want to disable this. Uh, there is a cooldown for hoppers uh, when full. We want to disable this as well. And lastly, there is a secondary POI sensor for villagers. We want to set this to negative one to disable it. This will fix stacking raid farms for paper. Next, we have the pufferfish configuration file. This comes packaged by default on a lot of purper servers. The first thing we want to change is disabling the entity suffocation optimization. This doesn't really affect performance. It's just something they change. Um, then for projectiles, we want to make these numbers uh, as big as possible. I picked 10,000. If you, for some reason, need a contraption that will load more chunks than this in the tick, then you can raise this even further. Then we have the DAB, which is similar to the entity activation range in Spigot. We want to disable this for vanilla behavior. And that is all of the settings we need to change for the pufferfish file. Lastly, we have the purper configuration file. There are only two settings that I noticed in here that needed to be changed. One was to set safe teleporting to false with end portals, and the other is to disable this patch for sand duping. Um, this is a big configuration file though, so it is very possible I may have missed something. I also may have missed something in the other configuration files. If any of you notice anything that I've missed that could be edited to make it behave more vanilla, please let me know in the comments and I will update the video description or release a second version of this video sometime in the future. As a final note, there are some mechanics that are broken on paper and purper without a config option available to re-enable them. So I've created this small plugin called Vanilla Paper, which adds RNG manipulation, uh, which you can use for enchanting or fishing, and sand and gravity block duplication with end portals. Um, so both of these mechanics will be reintroduced to the game with this plugin. I will keep it updated for future versions of Minecraft, and there will be a link in the description. All right, that's all I had. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this was helpful to those of you out there who have been looking to set up a spigot server with as close to vanilla behavior and gameplay as possible. Until the next time, bye.